Hello, my name is Kujo Oponkroma. I am the Member of Parliament for the Ofwasi Ayubi constituency and Minister of State of the Republic responsible for information. I want to start by apologizing to you, my uh, good friends at the Cape Coast University, for my inability to be there in person. I really, really, really would have wished to be with you today for this um, engagement, but unfortunately, um, some conflicting diary issues have required that I be at an equally important event. So I am at this event in person and I'm with you here in Cape Coast in spirit. Um, I would take the next 10-15 uh, minutes or so to share uh, the thoughts that I would have shared with you if I were with you uh, in person as well, as best as I can through this virtual platform. I also want to commend the office of the SRC Vice President and indeed the entire Student Representative Council for putting together this brilliant uh, initiative. It's an opportunity for you to dig deep and deepen your capacity so that you can do a lot more in the near future when you take over the reins of leadership wherever you find yourselves. You can do even better than what we are doing in our little corner. So I commend you. Keep it up. I'm looking forward to an opportunity to be with you uh, hopefully at the next such uh, summit. Like you, I am a young person who had the opportunity of being in Cape Coast University between the years of 2001 and 2005. I, uh, I took up a Bachelor of Commerce degree program, after which I then came to Accra to work as an intern at uh, the Multimedia uh, Company Limited. And through the ranks from an intern, uh, you know, partly through my national service which I did at British American Tobacco, but then I also worked as a part-time uh, worker here in Accra at um, Multimedia. And then eventually became a member of staff, rising through to the top to become an editor status employee, during which uh, period I hosted um, the station's leading breakfast show at the time, the Super Morning Show, and then a news file, as well as a number of major national engagements, including presidential debates, etc. I left uh, after close to a decade to pursue my private business interests and then a law career. And after I had practiced briefly as a lawyer and a private business person, I got attracted to get into politics. And today I'm a member of parliament and a minister of state. Um, using all the lessons I learned from Cape Coast University through my internship days, through my employment days, using all of those lessons uh, to serve as best as I can in my current capacity. So if you say leadership journey, I understand it to be a process of acquiring skills through service and bringing those skills to bear to serve in a higher capacity. For me personally, and I think for many other people, there are a number of challenges that you face on your journey of acquiring skills through service and bringing those skills to serve in higher office. One of the first challenges you would come across most likely is that most people will not believe in you. Majority of people will not believe that you have the capacity or the competencies to deliver on something. And as I mentioned, it starts from serving and using those skills that you acquire through service to serve in higher capacity. That's what leadership is about. Now, in the beginning, when you are given an opportunity to serve at the lowest level, chances are that majority of people will not believe in your ability. I remember when I was given an opportunity to serve as an intern at uh, a radio station. There were people who were of the view that this guy has never been to journalism school. He doesn't qualify. He can't do it. Indeed, those who had been to journalism school were some of the people who thought, I was not competent enough for the job. Um, then I remember when I got the opportunity to host uh, the breakfast show on Joy FM. Again, there were people who was like, this guy's never even been a bench for the morning show. He can't do it. Uh, then I remember when I got an opportunity to become a deputy minister or even a minister. There were a lot of people who have the view that he can't do it. You know, this guy's never been a politician before. He's never been a minister before. How is he going to do this? He can't do it. So one of the first things I realized is that a good number of people will not believe in you. 
it is a challenge that you have to work to overcome as the years go by to prove yourself and to prove them wrong. Another challenge that you are very likely to face is that people will actually undermine you. There will be people who don't only just not believe in you, but they will make an active effort to ensure that their view that you don't qualify for that job is proven right. And so they will work to undermine you. Whatever resources must be made available to you through them, some will withhold from you. Whatever opportunities must be given to you to prove yourself, some because they don't believe in you, as I mentioned earlier, will just you know, do their very best to sideline you. And then there are those who would work to create an ecosystem that doesn't believe in you. So chances are that apart from people not believing in you, you also find people who actively work to undermine even your best of efforts or to prove that your best of efforts are not good enough. I recall a funny incident when uh, on one of my most difficult shows at um, Joy FM when uh, the show had gone terribly bad at a time when many people didn't believe in me. I had listeners and then I had colleagues who were saying, <laughs> if this is how Komnad Moa had done the show, you think the show would have been here for you to come and host this? boy, we told you you can't do the show. You have to pack him somewhere and let's find somebody else to do it. And there will be active efforts, not just to not believe in you, but also to undermine you uh, sometimes. A third challenge that I think um, you are likely to face is that you will get very little help. Sometimes I hear young people who say, nobody's helping me, I'm doing my best, nobody's helping me, and nobody's giving me. You should actually expect that you'll get very little help. Not only will people not believe in you, not only will some work to undermine you, but the help that you think the ecosystem owes you and the society owes you and people should give you to carry you to the next level will most likely not come. Those are some of the challenges, first line challenges that you face. That comes in addition to your own life challenges sometimes financial challenges back home for those of you who are you know advanced in age married in a relationship etc sometimes you have family commitment sometimes you have work commitments other things that also then work to take away the the time and the opportunity and resources that you need to um, deliver on that leadership potential that you have I think there are about four things you need to do to overcome these potential challenges. Number one is that you need focus and clarity that this is the duty I've been called to do. This is the service I've been called to offer. And I'm going to do my very best to deliver it no matter the distractions and the storms around. Number one is that you need that clarity and focus. I've been given the opportunity to serve as a porter in this group to serve as an organizer in this group, as a secretary in this group, as a cleaner in this group, as the driver in this group, as the vice uh, president in this group. It's an opportunity to serve and prove yourself. No matter what anybody thinks, you need clarity and focus that this is the job I have been given as a personal assistant. I am going to ensure that I do this and I do it to the best of my ability. No matter what else goes wrong, this job will not fail. You need that clarity and focus on that opportunity today you've been given to serve. I've been given an opportunity as a photographer, as the one who prepares the room for the meeting, as the one who is the financial secretary. I'm going to make sure that even if everything fails in this group, this job I've been given will succeed. That's number one. Number two is that I think you need some mentorship and advice from people who have been in that position before, people who have succeeded in that position before, people who have failed in that position before, people who have worked with other people in that kind of position before. I've been given this job. What do I do? How do I get this right? How do I ensure I don't fail? So I recall in my very early days speaking to people who had gone to journalism school when I was told, you've never gone to journalism school, you can't do it. So I remember asking, I've never gone to journalism school before. I've, I've been given this job. What do I do to succeed? How do I get this right? How do I ensure I don't fail? I would speak to people who were trained journalists, practicing journalists, people who had succeeded at it before, people who had failed before. What made you fail? How come you didn't get it right? Is there a lesson I can learn from your experience? So that second point is that you need mentors, you need mentorship, you need advice from an ecosystem of people who've been there before, who've seen it before, who've succeeded, who've failed, who've done it before, who've worked with people who've done it before. It gives you perspective and key lessons on how to go about it. Now, while at that, 
you need to be clear in your mind that you need people who will give you advice that will be useful to you than people who will reinforce the view that, Master, forget it, you can't do it. You need some positivist. Because remember, I told you that chances are that a lot of people don't believe in you, won't give you the opportunity. So when looking for mentorship and advice, be clear to look for people who will feed a certain positive edge in you, not people who will reinforce the negatives. Number three, you need grit. Grit. I see a lot of young people who start one thing and fail, second time and fail, and they think that's the world, and that the world has come to an end. I can't do it. It's not possible. It's not working well. There are difficulties in life. Things don't succeed at the first try. In fact, sometimes the most successful people are people who have failed the most because they have learned how not to do it in many other ways. But to move from failure to eventual success, you need grit. You need the ability to carry on, learn lessons, carry on, make mistakes, learn from them, move on, do better. But you need grit. You need the staying power. You need the ability to fall down and get up and dust off your clothes and move one more time. How many of you know how to ride a bicycle? You know how to ride a bicycle. You would recall that the very first time you rode a bicycle without the two supporting ties, chances are that you fell. If you were one of the people who just said, I told you mean to me, and just left it after your first fall, chances are you'll never learn how to ride the bike. But if you're one of the people who falls, gets a little bruise, you get up, you dust it off, you get on the bike again, you fall again, you get up, you clean up, you try again, chances are that somewhere down the line, you'll be one of the people riding down the hill on a bike with your arms widespread because you have learned how to master the balancing of a motorbike or of a cycle. I remember when I learned how to ride a motorbike proper. I fell a few times. And for those of you who ride a motorbike, when the engine is very warm and it falls on your inner lap, <laughs> you will see how it burns. But I didn't stop there. And my instructor kept telling me that, get up, dust it off, let's go. Get up, dust it off, let's go. And that grit of coming back and doing it again the next time makes you better. One of my first shows on radio was terrible. When I listened to it today, it was appalling. It was a useless show. And when I listened to it, I'm like, oh, but this guy. But I was given opportunity and I kept trying to do it better. And one of my supervisors at the time, Matilda Santiago Yudu, I remember her very clearly telling me that, you are as good as tomorrow's show. You are as good as tomorrow's show. You are as good as tomorrow's show. So you have another opportunity. Get up and get it better tomorrow. So the third thing is great. And then the final thing I think you need to overcome all of this thing is a desire for excellence. There are too many of us young Africans who like to go around with this view that this is how it's done and that it is okay. This can pass. You must be one of those who has excellence as a value, who has clarity in your mind that you are not competing against mates in Cape Coast or in the central region or in Ghana or in West Africa or in Africa. You are competing against people from around the world. And so you are going to be the best in the world at that thing that you've been given an opportunity to serve us. Make excellence a value. And if you build that grit and keep trying and you make excellence a value, trying to become the best in the world at it, chances are that you overcome some of these challenges and you will indeed become one of the best at what you want to do in life. Who is a leader? My understanding of a leader is somebody who has had the opportunity to serve and has built a skill set and is bringing that skill set to serve again only in a higher capacity. A leader is not supposed to be a boss over everybody, throwing their weight about, you know, giving instructions and shouting commands here that if you don't follow what I say, then there's a problem. No, a leader is somebody who comes to serve with a skill set built over the years, serving in a lower capacity. And that kind of person, when he becomes a leader, knows how it is to serve at a lower level, knows how it is to see things in difficulty at a lower level, and therefore has an opportunity to try and make things easier for people who are down the value chain and has an opportunity to use that office to deliver value to people at the end. My objective in life is to try to make life better for other people. Thankfully, um, over the years, I've been blessed by God through my 
private career over the years from very early days in my life to be able to fend for myself and my family. But uh, where I am now, what I really desire to do is to try to make life better for other people. So if it's helping other people, you know, with their educational needs, their health needs, career opportunities, um, or if I'm given an opportunity to serve in a particular office, how do I make life better for people in this organization? How do I make this organization better? So my organization's work uh, becomes a key focal point through which I try to serve to make that organization, the people in that organization, better. My community's work as a member of parliament, how do I make lives better in my uh, community? So my, my vision, my objective in life is to make life better for people wherever I find them. One of the tricks to identify opportunities is to connect your personal skill set to the need around. If your skill set does not connect to the need, chances are that it is not an opportunity for you. So let's say I have learned how to sing over the years. I have a good voice, I can pitch well, I can sing. If I'm in a group and that group needs somebody to sing, that becomes an opportunity for me. I'm connecting my personal skill set to a need. Um, I I, 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 I have the skill set to work numbers, to work on policy, uh, to work on uh, marketing and communication related matters. If I'm in a space where there is a need, I quickly identify that there's an opportunity for me to bring my skill set to bear. If I'm in a space where they are looking for a pilot to fly a plane, that is certainly not an opportunity for me. I'll crash everybody around us. So I connect my skill set to the need around me and I sense that as an opportunity. And I think you can do the same too. Well, if you want to build your leadership capacity, two things that I think you should look at. First, an opportunity to serve. I don't think leadership is about running for office today that you want to run for office to become the something, something, something. No. It's about looking for an opportunity to serve today. Because that service will enable you to build your skill set. Which skill set will give you an opportunity to serve in higher office? That's one. Number two, in serving at a lower level living, I think what you need to do is to connect your skill to the need. So what is the skill that you have? How does it connect to the need available at that local committee or community? And when you are able to connect that, you know where to serve. That service at the lower level is what will bring you a higher day. When I joined the Students in Free Enterprise at the Cape Coast University, um, at the time it was known as Students in Free Enterprise, today it's known as Enactus. I was a good coordinator, getting things done. And so as a member of the group, when I realized that we needed um, to get things done in some of the communities around us, the Akuru and a few other places, I stepped up to take that opportunity as a project coordinator. I had no idea that later at the national competition, when our systems fail in our presentation, that skill set will bring me forward to coordinate our presentation because I had coordinated the project, so I knew everything we had done in our four projects. So when during our presentation things failed, that same skill set brought me forward to coordinate the presentation. That, ah, what did we do in project one? What did we do in project two? What was the target? What did we achieve? And in coordinating those questions and answers, we ended up presenting. Now that presentation impressed Mr. Kwesichum of Multimedia, who was a judge there, like, see this guy, things went off and he's coordinating the way they are doing it. He can think on his feet. And he offered me a job. And that same presentation, another judge, uh, Mr. Gumado, also said, this guy appears to have numbers at his fingertips. I want to give him a national service opportunity to do treasury at British American Tobacco. So see, um, skill set, need, I put it together as opportunity at Cape Coast University SAIF. It brought me to a national competition, which gave me two jobs. British American Tobacco and Joy FM. And I took those two jobs. Then I became a business reporter with my numbers and somebody who could coordinate and present on air. And those two came together to take me to become um, a member of staff and eventually to host the breakfast show on Joy FM, which then took me to higher levels. And today I'm sitting before you having this conversation. So that's how I did it. I believe it's a simple set that you can also follow.
I think one of the biggest things society needs to do for the youth is to give young people an opportunity. Give young people an opportunity. And in flip side or in reverse, young people take the opportunity to serve. I hear a lot of people say, is um, whom you know, whom you know. I don't think it's whom you know. I think it's who knows you. Hear me again, it's who knows you. And not just who knows you as a human being, but who knows what you can do. So we are in church. There's a little church group. If you take up a role to serve in the group as an assistant organizer or as secretary, and you do it with diligence, grit, and excellence, if I'm a member of that group, I will know you, I will spot you. And tomorrow when we are looking for people to do something, that's why I say, there's this guy in my church group who does this for us and he's so good. We should give him this opportunity. So it's about who knows you or who knows what you can do. That's what today's world is becoming. Let me be very honest with you. But that also means that you should take up the opportunity for service. Young man, young woman in a group, when an opportunity for service comes, don't say you are you know, way above it. Take it. There's a young girl I saw in my constituency somewhere around 2020. We were campaigning. And I saw this young lady who was with us campaigning. She was standing somewhere as we were campaigning. She noticed an old woman coming from the farm. And the old man was carrying stuff. And she left where we were, walked across, went to, I was standing on the podium still speaking, went to where the old woman was and took the old woman's stuff and went across with her to her house. I just said, this young girl, this, and apparently this girl, I didn't know at the time, but she was a first year university student, actually from Cape Coast University. I didn't know. I was like, hey, which young girl is so down to earth who will leave, you know, what she's doing, go and carry some woman's stuff and carry it home and come back and stand there. That's really impressive. So later, I asked one of the team members, find out who that young lady is. Then they found out who she was. And I got to know her. Student, apparently needed a bit of help, needed a laptop, support with education, etc. But she had demonstrated service. So I was like, find me that young lady, let's support her. Today, I think she's a beneficiary of my scholarship program. We bought her a laptop, we're giving her opportunity. So young people, take up the opportunity to serve. And I also ask that society should give young people an opportunity. Do not fear to fail. In fact, in America, they say fail faster. One of the best ways to build experience is to try something, fail at it, learn how not to do it, do it better next time. I see a lot of people are sometimes scared to try because they are afraid they will fail. Give it a shot. Try it. If you fail, you learn from it and you do it better next time. And what is the worst that can happen if you fail? We're in a part of the world where sometimes people make failure look fatal. But failure shouldn't look fatal. Actually, failure means you have tried it before and you figured out how not to do it and you can do it better. My daughter started swimming and I remember her going for a competition and the first time, I think for the 50 meter dash, she did 56 seconds or so. And when she came out of the pool, I'm like, how was it like? She's like, oh, I did 56 seconds, but next time I'm going to do 54 seconds. Guess what? She did 54 seconds the next time. And now she set herself new targets that she wants to meet. So try. You may fail, but then you try again. If at first you don't succeed, try, try, try again. It's one of the things that I think people should have clear in their minds, that you have to give yourself an opportunity to try. And even if you don't succeed, you try again and get it better next time. So I think that it's a brilliant idea for young people to work towards unlocking their leadership potential. The way to do that is service at the lower level. Find what skill set you have, what need is available at the lower level, take it as an opportunity, provide service there, and your service will carry you through. Clap for him.